legacies are announced and removed. And so throughout this month, you will hear from different caucus members on the events that they've planned, addressing the issues that African Americans have dealt with in very unique ways. But before we continue, I want to acknowledge some of our um, dignitaries that have showed up in support of today. So one, I want to acknowledge that we have James Bond, who is the secretary designee for the Wisconsin Department of Affairs. Thank you for joining us. We also have Secretary Designee Olson Collins from Wisconsin Department of Financial Institutions. Thank you for joining us. And we also have um, Otis Woods, Administrator for the Wisconsin State Survey Agency Director. We have Mona Nelson, the Manager for Project Management Office from DHS. Paul Tran, who was the State Health Officer and Administrator from Division of Public and Health. And with that being said, I also want to acknowledge um, our lovely colleagues behind me <laughs> who have all joined us today. And I must acknowledge that we have Minority Leader Greta Neubauer as well as Senate Minority Leader, Senator Agard. Thank you for joining us. And now with that being said, I want to invite um, someone who has done amazing work, not only as a faith leader in our communities, but has done extreme work on what it looks like to do justice within the justice system. And with that, I want to bring up the Honorable Judge Everett Mitchell for prayer. As we take a moment to uh, bow our heads in prayer, it is always a moment to remember all of those whose lives have, have lost to give us the ability to be and stand where we are today, not only in black history, but also our indigenous communities as well. So let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far the way, thou who has by thy night led us into Light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. As we ceremony remembering this year, 2023, in Black History, we remember that Black History is a moment that we reflect on all the contributions, the life, and legacies of so many heroes and sheroes and they roles that have stood in the gap to make sure that we can have what we are able to walk in today. So, in this place of justice and fairness and love and equality, all generations being represented together, allow us this pause moment to just bring their spirits into this space so that we're able to stand together in a sense of solidarity, not just a way to remember the past, but also a way to dictate and think about our future. Thank you for the leadership of this state. Thank you for the, and pray over all of the minority leaders in this place that continue to stand in the gap so that all communities of our state are represented in love, truth, and fairness. It is in your name that we pray and we ask it all. Let everyone say together, amen, amen. And amen. Thank you, Judge Mitchell, for that wonderful prayer. And so now we are going to kick it off to Liz Elizabeth Coleman, who is not only a local singer in the Milwaukee area, but has done tremendous work with our youth in working with Capitol Productions' We Are the Drum. And at this time, I'll invite her to sing Lift Every Voice and Sing. And with your programs, there should be lyrics on the back to follow as well. Lift every voice and sing till all from heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of me, but she Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of 
of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the presence has brought us. Facing the right Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Black History Month. As I wait for my water, no, we're just going to dip it. So, before, so, so before, uh, there's a West African tradition that before you uh, address a group of people, you ask an elder for permission to speak. And I've known this gentleman all my life. Um, and so, may, may I proceed, sir? Yes, sir. Bro Brother Earl, do I have permission to speak? Do I have permission to speak? Can I proceed? Thank you, thank you. Um, and so, when we start anything, we start with libation. Libation is simply asking our ancestors to come and be with us. And not so much to be with us, because they're always with us, but it's more so for us to ensure that we know that they're present. Because your grandfather, great-grandfather, whoever you had um, is always there, and you're the same seed that's the seed that's the seed of them, and it's going back for so long. And uh, black people on this planet, we have a great tradition, we have a great history that we're going to talk about and celebrate today. Um, and so when we pour libation, we use water. Why? Because water has no enemy. There, everybody here drinks water. There are people who are Democrats in this building, they drink water. The people who are Republicans in this building, they drink water. There are those who, are, who consider themselves more independent, they drink water too. Your body is 75% water. The earth is covered under a surface uh, three-fourths with water. So we use libation. And when we pour libation, we say ashe. Ashe means thus it is. It is because we declare it to be. Um, it is because we say so, just like when you were younger and you would ask your uh, elder in your family, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? And they would say, because I said so. That's right. That's why. So we say ashe. And so we pour libation to the continent of Africa, where no matter who you are, that's where you come from, and, uh, or you come through there at some point. And so we pour libation to the great civilizations that preceded us. Um, we pour libation to the, the Zulu people, to, Ashe, to the Shanghai. Ashe. We pour libation to the Yoruba, Ashe. the Igbo, Ashe. the, the uh, Hausa people, Ashe. The, uh, the people of the Edo kingdom, where I come from. To the, to the Dahomey, and, and so many other civilizations, the Akan as well. And we pour a libation to individuals like Imhotep, who's the father of science. We pour a libation to King Shaka, Queen Heshepsut, Brother Yasin Twa, one of the greatest warriors ever to ever live. And we pour a libation to those who fought against our captivity on, uh, or on the continent. Individuals like King Shock of the Zulu fighting against the, uh, the British. We pour a libation to Queen Mother Yasin Twa of the Ashanti. We pour a libation to Singbe Pie, also known as Joseph Sinke, who fought on the Amistad against our captivity. We pour a libation to those who died in the Middle Passage. Six million people died in the Middle Passage alone. Their bodies form a carpet at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. The great Maafa, as we call it, or the African Holocaust. And 
We pour libations to them. Those who, some who jumped over those ships because they knew what was waiting for them was worse, far worse than what they were going through. And they struggled and sacrificed so we could be here today. Um, I need folks to repeat after me. Black people were never slaves. 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 Black people were captives. You see, a slave is someone or something that submits his will to a master. Black people in this country never submitted. There were thousands of recorded revolts against our captivity. So we pour libation to individuals like Nat Turner, Gabriel Prosser, Denmark Vesey, Toussaint L'Overture, Queen Mother Nanny of the Maroons, Harriet Ross Tubman, and so many others who fought against our captivity. And we pour libation to contemporary names like the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, Ashe. Malcolm X, Ashe. Uh, uh, Sister Ella Baker, Ashe. Sojourner Truth, Ashe. and so many names that we can name. I know y'all got some names. Name some that was, came through this building on our behalf. That's next. Okay. <laughs> so. And there, there are so many other names that we can name. We also want to name uh, more contemporary names we do know. Folks like Val Phillips. Ashe. Folks like Marsha Cox. Ashe. Folks like I. Cox. Ashe. Uh, folks uh, like, is, yes, Ezekiel Gillespie. Ashe. Individuals like Tamara Grigsby. Ashe. Lloyd Barbie. Ashe. And so many others. That we, that we have, folks who fought, names we know who fought in the state of Wisconsin. And then we know names that are close to us, like Big Mama, Mud Deer, Paw Paw, Cousin Skeeter, Ashe. Uncle Junebug, Ashe. Big Tone from the Block, Ashe. and so many names that we know. So if you have a name, say the name. Antonio. Say the name of ancestors. Say the name. Caesar Right, say the name. Say the name. Delta Packer. And lastly, we pour a libation to those who are to come. There are maybe babies sitting on laps. Somebody may be on their way here in the next few months. There are people be people who go on and do greater things than we ever imagined. And we pour a libation because now it is up to us to put in them what somebody put into us so we could be here. And so we pour a libation to them and their futures because their future is our future. And so we pour a libation here and we say, Ashe, 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 Ashe. Ashe. Thank you. So, just keep going. All right. And Baba Earl, don't think I forgot your name. I just was I saying this, brother. Don't think I forgot your name. <laughs> so he used to he used to uh, drum with my father and Kofi, um, dance company. So I just I had to shout him out. Um, so he's known me since I probably couldn't even walk yet. So. We're here celebrating Black History Month. And I want to start off by saying that our history as black people in this country did not begin when we arrived in chains. That we have a great rich tradition that is the foundation of almost every culture on this planet. And some of it was shared willingly, some of it was taken from us. And we want to celebrate all of our traditions. So Carter G. Woodson started Black History Month as Black History Week in 1926, as Negro History Week. Um, it, it, was, it was used as a time to celebrate the accomplishments of black people, not only in this country, but abroad and throughout the world. Um, it has never been accepted by us that black people had never done anything worthy of celebrating. Um, we recognize that we all have lived under oppression for an extended period of time, not only in this country, but through uh, other parts of the planet as well, if we look at colonialization, et cetera. So what Negro History Week was, was a moment not only to recognize that we had done significant things on the planet, um, in the past, but to recognize and celebrate the work we had done in the previous year. Uh, and for those who don't know Carter G. Woodson, he is a great philosopher, he is a great 
professor, and um, he has some great books. He has one book that's notable. It's not the main one, but it's called Miseducation of the Negro. And if you don't read anything by him, read that one. Um, uh, he was a proponent of the work. And he was not celebrating of the work that you were, as my mother say, says, fin to do. It was the work that you had done. Because many people get Black History Month wrong. That now we will, sell, we will do some work in one month out of the year. We'll take 28, maybe 29 days to do some black work out of the entire year. No, Black History Month is a celebration of the work you have done all year. It is the presentation of the work that you've done all year long. And Dr. Woodson was quoted as saying, he was, he was notable as saying, no work, no celebration. If you didn't do no work, you don't got nothing to celebrate. And so, for my colleagues who are here, and for my colleagues who are elsewhere who have done the work, some people who are present here, we recognize the work that you've done. Not what you finna do, however, what you've already done. But we know what you finna do because we know what you've done. Um, like I said before, our history did not begin as captives. When we were captured, tortured, and human trafficked across the Atlantic Ocean and brought here um, uh, for, to, to heighten capitalism and be free labor for folks. Um, we have the greatest story of resilience on this planet. People who have been through what we've been through and have come to be sitting where we are and doing the things that we're doing right now. Um, much of the free labor that we have given and building of this country, if you look at folks like Benjamin Banneker who uh, rebuilt Washington DC and those, many of those buildings were built by those who were captives. If you look at the millions and billions of dollars that were made not only here in the United States but across the planet off of the trade and labor of, of African people, you know, that has gone unrequited. There, there has been no uh, effort to ensure that those who are the descendants of those folks were made whole. And we need to have that conversation as well. Th that conversation is being had throughout the country, not only federally, but locally and in states like California and Illinois and at the federal government. We need, we need to have that conversation as, as a debt that is owed to the descendants of people. And so I'll wrap up by starting by ending the way I started. We were never slaves. Black people in this country were never slaves. We were captives because we never submitted. We are some of the greatest people who've ever existed on this planet. We invented science. We invented kingdoms, civilizations. We have our brothers and sisters all over the planet, not only here in the United States, but in the diaspora as it is known. We were never slaves. We invented science, technology, engineering, math. Like when a young black person says, I can't do math, well, my father would say, why not? You invented it. It came from you. So this Black History Month, with myself and my colleagues, we celebrate our richness, our greatness, and we highlight the things and the challenges that many of us still have as a result of us being in this part of the planet. However, we especially talk about how great we are and our resilience and what we will continue to do. So I thank you for allowing me to give all of those long words I just gave and we will continue on. Peace and blessings. Thank you, Representative Mora Mukunde. And now at this time, we will have caucus members speak about each week that they are highlighting, starting with week one, focusing on business and nonprofit. All right, good afternoon. That was not good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One more time, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Black History Month. Um, today is a special day for us as we kick off a exciting month um, where we honor and celebrate the work that has been done in black history and the impact that black Americans have had on this country, but the world around us. Um, and before we get into our week, which is week one, um, my colleague to my right is also celebrating a special day today. Rep. Dan Madison, our newest caucus member, is his birthday. So happy birthday, Dan. Yay. You want to sing? We're not going to sing happy birthday. I'm not singing. You can sing. <laughs> 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a singer at all. Um, I don't dance either, so I don't, yeah. Um, but week one is Business, Nonprofit, and Economic Development Week, um, where we try to focus on business, black business, nonprofits um, that deliver resources and support to our communities, and also economic growth and prosperity. Uh, so to kick off this week, um, today is day one. Follow this, ev this event, the kickoff, at 2 o'clock. Um, please join us in the Joint Finance Room, which is 412 East. Um, we'll be, we will watch a documentary. Y'all can hear me now? There we go. Uh, we will watch a documentary um, about the Honorable Vail Phillips. Um, many, many know her name, um, but Vail Phillips was a first of many. Um, our first black judge in Wisconsin. She was our first um, statewide elected officer, um, first black statewide elected officer, but also the reason the first woman all we had in the city of Milwaukee, um, but the reason why we have fair housing now um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we want to celebrate her, um, but also acknowledge the work she put in to make sure we get fair housing um, in the story. It's a 60 minute documentary about that effort um, and the work she put in there. So please join us there. Uh, I did buy drinks and snacks, so please come eat and enjoy. Uh, I do not want to take them home. I'm trying to lose weight. Uh, so join us there at the Island Bill Phillips. The representatives, um, Haywood and Madison, will also, uh, with me, we will do a program on Friday. So what a critical time, right, for us to be able to set a, celebrate Black History Month. I am Wisconsin State Senator Lena C. Taylor, and it is my honor to be a part of this observation of Black History. Since my office created it in 2007, the intent to highlight the accomplishments and the contributions of African Americans has been our goal. American history is what our chairwoman said. American history is black history. We should be valued, taught, and frankly, we should be, refl we should be reflected accurately, accurately. Thank you, Representative Moore Amakunde, for the history, wherever you went. Oh, over there. <laughs> All right. We had no idea that 17 years later, we would see legislators from across the nation seeking to redistrict, restrict, remove black history, even from our schools and our education system. Neither my ancestors, enslavement, sacrifice, suffering, or successes would be dis diminished, devalued, or de dismissed. We instead will educate, celebrate, and build that history. It is in that spirit that we are observing Black History Month. It's in that spirit that we do the week that Representative Haywood has spoke about. It's in that spirit and part of that week that we want to see growth and success of black businesses. So we are thrilled that we will be hosting an event this Friday. It's convening at a new agency that I don't know if you know of that the federal government has done. It is the Wisconsin New Minority Business Development Agency Business Center. It's located in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, in yes, the fourth Senate district. We are inviting, yes, yes, I'm so excited about it. So we are inviting business chambers, nonprofits, business improvement districts, and individual business owners to attend. You'll be able to learn how the center can help your businesses, your clients, serve, and frankly, grow assisting to, a gain, to gain access to capital, contracts, and supporting job creation and retention. They can meet the MBDA leadership team and learn important information from state agencies also regarding minority business engagement. The sessions are gonna be with OCI, the Office of the Commissioner of Insurance, DHS, the Department of Health Services, DWD, the Department of Workforce Development, and it will happen from 11 to 12.30. The sessions will also, a session will also exist with WEDC, 
the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, the Old Commerce. And the open house for that agency will be available for at the business center and it will run from one to three o'clock. If you need more information, feel free to contact Representative Haywood, Representative Madison, or myself, Senator Taylor. We look forward to seeing you during week one. Yep, the best week of Black History Month. Thank you. And so I'm speaking on behalf of Senator Johnson, who cannot be here today. She does send her regards. But she is hosting the second week focused on health. And so she is focusing on the physical and mental health of what it means in our African American communities. So Tuesday, February 7th, is going to include a Milwaukee focus by, by featuring community and local government agencies, while Thursday will take a statewide approach with discussions including state entities such as the Department of Public Instruction, the Department of Health Services, and the Department of Children and Families. And these events will both be taken virtually. And if there are any questions, of course, reach out to Senator Johnson's office. So now I would like to invite those who are taking care of week three. I'm excited to partner with State Representative Lakeisha Myers, who sends her regards, uh, she's actually at her day job teaching, to provide and engage the community on the issues of education. Representative Myers could not be present today for the kickoff. She's ironically, as I said, with her students. But we are pleased to host three events during week three, which will first be a blood drive. This is, I forget what number year, but we do the blood drive because the issues around our community related to sickle cell, health disparities, you name it, this and organ donation, because Representative Myers herself, I'm off script, but I gotta say it, was a organ transplant um, donor, I mean not donor, recipient. And so these are very important issues. So it is on the 14th, you can't show more love on Valentine's Day than to give blood. So even if you can't come to our blood drive, I encourage you in honor of Black History Month to give blood this February 14th. We'll be doing that at Vincent High School. Education includes both printed material, classroom activities, and engagement with community partners. Right here in the Capitol on Wednesday, February the 15th, we will offer a lunch and learn with a lecture from Dr. Cedric Burroughs of Marquette University. The lecture, Reimagining the Public Image of Dr. Martin Luther King, will trace how Dr. King's image has evolved to fit certain narratives for American society and how we can place him in his historical and cultural context. And we will conclude the week with my favorite, it is the, res the education resource fair for K through 12 um, parents, students, and very, ca very candidly community members. It will provide opportunities for them to meet with vendors uh, who offer summer programming, enrichment, tutoring, and activities for our youth so that we can change the education outcomes that exist. For information on these activities, please feel free to contact either myself or Representative Lakeisha Myers to participate in the best week. Oh, I said that before, didn't I? The third week of Black History Month. Second best. Second best. Second best. And now for week four, if this is the third best week, <laughs> I'm going to invite Senator Lena Taylor, Representative Madison, Representative Moore McCunde, and myself to talk about week four, focusing on Justice Week. So for the first day of 
not first day, the first event is going to be Wisconsin Empathy Day here. Uh, and we're partnering with Dream.org, and that's I, myself, and Senator Taylor, focusing on what it means to give a fair second chance to people. It's no question that we are still the state with the highest rate of mass incarceration for black individuals. So what are we going to do not only to prevent it, but what to do when they come home? And so this event's going to be different events and panel discussions on different pieces of legislation that has been currently introduced, the bipartisan nature of what that means to bring change. And we invite you all to that, which is Wednesday, February 22nd, from 10 to 4. Yep. The third best week of Black History Month. There. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll turn it over for Rep. Madison for the rest of the events. Indeed. So on, um, we know that uh, justice in, in the state of Wisconsin um, isn't limited to our criminal justice system. Um, I have a background in climate justice as well as quite a few of my colleagues. Um, Senator Taylor has carried the mantle uh, for climate justice um, in the city of Milwaukee and in this building um, for so many years. Um, and Representative Moore Amakunde um, has gone as far to have a whole climate justice package of bills which he can speak to um, as well. Um, I'm glad to be in this space alongside my colleagues um, to work collaboratively um, and to uplift the impacts of climate justice on black, black communities in particular. Right? As we know, climate justice affects us all tremendously. It disproportionately affects black communities at a much higher rate. Um, as we live in communities um, where that are neglected um, by, you know, by corporate interests as well as so many other folks, um, and we work tremendously to try and provide access um, for our children and our families um, to, to live thriving, sustainable lives. So on, um, again, on week four, um, on Thursday, February 23rd, um, we will have a panel of, of Wisconsin environmental justice on Wisconsin environmental justice efforts, specifically in black communities um, at the Urban Ecology Center um, in Milwaukee. Um, and we have some amazing folks that will speak to the efforts that have been happening as it relates to green jobs, as it relates to food, quality food access, um, as it relates to other pathways to sustainable energy, um, not only in Milwaukee, but in our state and in our nation. Um, and then also the importance of protecting green spaces um, in our cities, our states, and our nation um, as a long-term effort to um, push justice for all of us. We'll leave it at that. Which week? Week the four. Third best week. <laughs> And I'll speak briefly to uh, Representative Balde, our Vice Chair, could not be with us here, unfortunately, but he is going to be focusing on the global impact. I think we need to also recognize that though there are um, African Americans here in this state, there's also African communities, communities in the African diaspora that are still impacted by the issues that we've just uh, listed. So his event will be Friday, February 24th from 1 to 4 as well. And with that being said, I think we can save the best for last, Black Lobby Day. And this is in partnership with the Wisconsin Legislative Action Coalition to not only encourage people to come to the Capitol that may have never had the chance to come before, but to engage with legislators to speak to the importance of civic engagement and to have uh, more information about that. And I would invite Senator Taylor to speak more on that. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Chairwoman Representative Drake. So on Tuesday, February 28th, we have Black Advocacy Day at the Capitol from 9 through 6 p.m. You can learn how to advocate, how to do it effectively, meet with legislators and community leaders, participate in workshops and panels that will exist during the day, but here, a keynote speaker that is amazing, Dr. Hussein Jeffries, the minority leader in Congress, um, his brother, who he likes to say he's the baby of the Jeffries family. 
<laughs> but I want to say that he is an amazing um, historian. He's an amazing leader. And so I hope that you will come and join us. We will be right in this area on the 28th when he speaks. And we will end our day with a reception with the governor of the state of Wisconsin, Governor Tony Evers, at his residence. It's going to be a good time. You better sign up while you can. It is the fifth greatest thing <laughs> about Black History Month. So one, I want to just have everyone give a round of applause for our caucus members and the wonderful events that are going to be planned for Black History Month. our dignitaries that have joined us, thank you. For our colleagues that have shown up with support, thank you. But also to everyone that's in the public, and I must say, we must acknowledge our youth. There are youth here, and we do not do a good enough job making sure that they are in the front, that we uplift them, and that we make sure we give them the tools to thrive and succeed. So I am extremely happy that I see students and youth here among us today. But to end the program with closing remarks, you know, fear is the breeding grounds for ignorance. Fear is the breeding ground for ignorance. And so the importance of what our colleagues have stated from Representative Marma Kunde speaking to the history of why it's so important to acknowledge the contributions to the people that we have listed that have come before us and to people that are coming after us. I encourage everyone to take time and to attend the events that our caucus members have put together. They're educational and they're meant for us to all grow. And with that, also to acknowledge and highlight and revalue what the truth is when it comes to Black History Month and when it comes to our history. And with that, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna ask caucus members to stay around for photos. And with that, we are all dismissed. <laughs>